Hi everyone, it's Dr. Christina here, the Dr. Biohacking Supermom, and today we're gonna to be talking about genetics and autoimmunity and what every parent needs to know. If autoimmunity runs in your family, you may not know that it's a high likelihood that you will also have autoimmune disease. And if you do know that, you probably think there's nothing you can do about it. So if you are a parent and you have a family history of autoimmune disease or you yourself has an autoimmune disease, what you need to know is that it could express itself differently in your child. And so if you're looking for the same symptoms you had, uh, your child may not have the same expression. And the other thing you need to know is that there is something that you can do to prevent those genetics from turning themselves on and expressing themselves as an autoimmune disease in your children. The first things that we start to see are those small little things that we shrug off as parents like, oh, she just has a nervous tummy or, oh, well, maybe she didn't drink enough water. But if you start to see these symptoms recur over and over again, that prodromal series of symptoms and the prodromal is like the early phases before disease. When you start to see those things happen and they keep getting worse and worse and more symptoms come up. So now it's a tummy ache with a rash. Now it's a tummy ache with some constipation and some mood disorders. Maybe there's some tingling in the fingers. Those are signs that that autoimmunity is starting to slowly build. And autoimmune diseases, you can actually test for the prodromal symptoms and the um, antibodies to those tissues somewhere between eight to 10 years before the full-blown autoimmune disease occurs. So what does that mean to you? It means it may take seven, eight, nine years of your child's symptoms getting worse and worse and you going from doctor to doctor and no one finding anything before you actually have an autoimmune disease that's full blown. And these signals that your body is sending you every year, every month, and they're getting worse and worse, they are signals that your body is struggling and that the environment is out of balance. If you have autoimmunity in your family history, and you have mystery symptoms, you need to do additional testings. The first test I recommend is called ANA. And if your ANA is positive, you have active autoimmunity. The second thing that you can look at is looking at your white blood cells within the normal range. Most often times I find that if things are within the normal range, the conventional approach is to say everything's okay. But if you can look at your white blood cell range and it's on the high end of normal, it is a good indicator that your immune system is getting revved up. And it's a good indicator that there is a possibility, unless you've recently had an infection, that there is a possibility that autoimmunity may be starting to try and express itself. And it's a great way to catch autoimmune disease before it fully expresses itself. The second thing you wanna do, if you have a family history of autoimmunity, is look at gut health. It has been said that all chronic disease starts and ends in the gut, and that is an easy place for us to focus on. Although gut healing is a complex process, there are very simple steps that you can take to start that journey of discovery. I like to call it the discovery diet. You can discover which things make your child or your family member's symptoms worse. And you can also discover which things make them better and which contribute to healing. My top things that create inflammation and are inflammatory to most people's guts are things like processed food, high sugar food, boxed food, and things that are processed grains and uh, vegetable oils. My top things that I have seen in my practice really contribute to healing is adequate amount of protein and lots and lots of plants, including green leafy vegetables, sulfur containing vegetables like mushrooms and broccoli and cabbage and Brussels sprouts and cauliflower. Really taking a look at your child and intuitively, you probably already know the things that bother your child. So write those things down. And when your child's having a good day and it looks like they're starting to heal or feel better and they have absence of symptoms, look at what they're eating and look at those things and write those things down. So if you've gotten the blood work and you've started your gut healing and you need more information, take a look at my video on mystery symptoms and you can start doing those three action steps today to start you on your healing journey. Thanks for joining me. If you have any questions, comment below. And don't forget to like this video 
and subscribe to my YouTube channel. If you want more information, join my Myth Busting Motherhood Facebook group.